AQA A level physics uh, for the turning points option, and this is my tenth video, and it's about uh, Michelson and Morley's experiment. So, what is the ether? Well, the ether is an imaginary fluid which fills space. Okay, um, we get waves from the sun, we get light rays from the sun. Now, those rays must travel through something. There must be some kind of a medium that they travel through. So we imagine there's some kind of fluid filling empty space that these waves can travel through, that light can travel through, the luminiferous ether. And this idea of the ether goes back to Aristotle, you know, 300 years BC. For a long, long time, scientists imagined this stuff this luminiferous ether. And on its journey around the sun, well, the, the planet Earth is traveling around the sun at about 30 kilometers a second. Yes, it does its circle once a year, 30 kilometers per second. And that's, if you like, this absolute motion of the Earth traveling through space. So we imagine the Earth whizzing through space at 30 kilometers per second. That means that uh, if you were to shine a light in a certain direction, then the speed of light should be slower if you were going against the motion of the Earth through space. You know, if you shone a light that way, then that beam of light should be traveling slower than, let's say, if you shone a beam of light that way. Okay. Now, Albert Mickelson. He'd already done some experiments to measure the speed of light, and he got some very, very good answers as well. Uh, then, uh, in 1887, he collaborated with another scientist, uh, Edward Morley, and their goal was to prove that the ether existed. And they reckoned they could do it by measuring the speed of light or looking at the difference in the speed of light when it traveled, as I said, if it's going that way, or if it's going that way. And if they could find a, dis a difference in the speed of light, they could work out the speed of the ether and confirm that it's about 30 kilometers per second. So they wanted to detect the absolute motion of the Earth through the ether, this 30 kilometers per second. And how were they going to do it? They were going to use a device called an interferometer. So this is the interferometer, and let's talk about how that works, okay? So we shine a beam of light, and uh, it hits this mirror, a half-silvered mirror. So that means that some of the light goes that way, and then some of the light goes that way, yes? And then the two beams bounce off different mirrors, and they come back again to this mirror, and they come down here and they hit a screen and they interfere. OK, now uh, the beam of light is split into two rays which take different paths. The two rays eventually arrive at the screen where they interfere. Now, when they interfere in the middle of the pattern, do you get a maximum or do you get a minimum? Well, if they arrive in phase, you get constructive interference and you will get a maximum. If they arrive out of phase, then you will get destructive interference and you will get a minimum. So basically, uh, whether you get a white spot in the middle of the pattern or not will depend on the, the path difference, yes, because that will affect the phase difference. So if there was any change, that would be noticeable. And this whole apparatus, you could rotate it it was on like a rotating turntable, which was floating on a bed of mercury. And you could rotate the whole apparatus through 90 degrees and you could see if there was a difference. And based on what we were talking about before, there should be a difference, shouldn't there? Because the paths will travel different lengths as the apparatus moves through the ether. Yeah, the apparatus is moving that way. The ether is moving that way relative to the apparatus. Uh, the ray of light that does that stuff 
will end up traveling a different distance, this ray of light will actually travel a shorter distance, won't it? So if you rotate the whole thing through 90 degrees, there should be a difference, yeah, a measurable difference. And basically there wasn't. There was no difference whatsoever. Um, uh, did the experiment many, many times. It has been repeated. It makes no difference at all. There is no absolute motion. Um, very, very surprising. The experiment failed, but it generated this very important idea that there is no absolute motion. And Einstein explained why nearly 20 years later. And we're going to talk a lot more about this in my next video. What they accidentally discovered was now, first of all, kid on a skateboard uh, chucks a ball at two meters per second. OK, so if the skateboard's going at three, then the ball travels at five. Yeah, because it's relative. The speed of the ball depends on the speed of the observer. The kid sees the ball going at two. Somebody looking onwards would see it going at five. Now, look at this kid on a rocket and the rocket is traveling at one times 10 to the eight meters per second. Uh, they shine a torch. OK. For the kid on the rocket, speed of the light coming from the torch, three times 10 to the eight, uh, an external observer, the velocity of light, it's not four times 10 to the eight, it's three times 10 to the eight. The speed of light does not depend on the speed of the observer. And that's basically the conclusion from the Michelson Morley experiment. And as a result of that, some crazy new physics special relativity, which is the next video.